Hi guys. Um, so if you can please raise your full hand when you'd like to ask a question. Uh, Beth, kick off with you. Yes, thank you very much. Well, Wayne, Dan, uh, an incredible end to that match. But first to you, Wayne, how would you reflect on that 18 minutes for Wales? Yeah, really, uh, two, two halves, wasn't it? The first half, we were disappointed with the, the discipline. I think we gave away eight penalties uh, at the breakdown. Uh, that was with and without the ball. So we talked about that at half time. Now, obviously, you know, you're chasing a half, then you can't really get a foothold in the game. So we conceded points and uh, obviously going 17-0 down wasn't the way we wanted to start the second half. So that was frustrating, but obviously a very, very good end of the game, um, but a very frustrating uh, try that we conceded. You said about, you know, being 17-0 down, but for, for in your eyes, where did it go wrong for Wales and, and, and where, did, where in reflection could you have done better? Uh, clearly, the penalties that I mentioned in the first half to, get, to concede those points, um, mean, sorry, it meant that we were chasing the game. Uh, disappointed with the try. Uh, it was the only try we considered in the match, and I think if we had an opportunity to review that try, it probably wouldn't have been given. So that was frustrating. But to the players' credit, they got straight back on the horse and, um, you know, came back with two very good tries. And, you know, we were there right at the death trying to win the match. So um, very pleased with that second half. Wales showed at times what they can do with ball in hand. Does that give you confidence moving forwards into the next round? Yeah, look, you're always trying to build on the performances and there's plenty to take out of that game, which was pretty positive, as I said, in that second half. You know, we did get the ball in hand a lot more. We, we built phases. We started to win some collisions. We were getting some reasonably quick ball and we looked dangerous and, and scored two tries and uh, we went uh, far off a, a third match winning one. Dan, to you, we spoke earlier in the week about Wales having to start strong and fast. And, you know, it was the same almost against Ireland. How disappointed are you with, with, that, with that first half especially? Yeah, well, very disappointed, obviously, because it's probably shaped the way shaped the way the game has gone, hasn't it? In terms of in terms of us probably having to chase the game a little bit, and we would have liked to have put a lot more shape on them in the first half than, than we did in the second half, sort of thing. So, um, yeah, just it was just a, a combination really of not being able to retain ball uh, in contact and, and obviously break down penalties, which just stopped any attack and flow for us in terms of backing up good on good, really. So. Um, yeah, pretty disappointing with the, with the start, but but like like Wayne has mentioned, it was really pleasing for us to to find some real shape in that second half and, and play some really good rugby and, and stretching as much as we did. But uh, you know, ultimately, I think we, you know it's going to be the main headline is going to be you know you you can't start poorly in in places like the Aviva or Twickenham and, and expect to to pick up results really. Obviously, we also spoke about, you know, how crucial round three is. Now, that means, obviously, with, you know, I'm not Carol Vorderman, but it looks like Wales is retaining the championship. It looks out of your hands completely now. How do you, how do you feel about that? Well, obviously, disappointed <clears throat> to be uh, two down after three rounds, clearly. Uh, but we, are, we have two games left, two home games. And from our point of view, those games are very, very important. You know, so uh, we'd like to finish the competition strongly, especially at home. And, you know, what better place to uh, to try and pick up a big result against France, who are playing so well at the moment. Last one for me. Um, so, some standout performances. Alex Cuthbert on his 50th cap and, you know, what Watkin and, and the, you know, um, some of the players. Could you kind of give me your your opinion on some of the performance out there for Wales today? Well, I thought Alex in his 50th game was was immense. You know, he was the guy that was coming off his wing. He was, he was taking the ball down the right flank. Then within a couple of phases, taking the ball down the left flank in the 80th minute of the game, you know, he, he was superb and he obviously enjoyed the opportunity and, and played well. I thought there were some very good performances. I think a lot of the bench came on and in fact, all of them added impact. So that was very, very pleasing. But um, yeah, it's just frustrating that we didn't get a result for those players. Cheers. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Okay, coming to Nick. Wayne, how difficult is it to fix those uh, discipline issues that you've talked about it in in training especially as uh, against a side like France who will uh, do their best to stress your defense as we've seen in their performances so far yeah well they're very good at the breakdown aren't they they're good at doing very well at the defensive breakdown um look our boys uh, some of them were silly penalties weren't they you know not rolling away so getting trapped on the wrong side of, of, the, t of the tackle situation and then you know a couple of times uh, we're probably too good in terms of a couple of the line breaks we made and got isolated, but those things happen. Um, so, yeah, it's an area of the game which we're working hard on. And, 
you know, uh, it's something that we need to get right for France because they're dangerous in that area. And Dan, how much do you think Wales have to improve to uh, find top gear and, and put those maybe 30 minutes of performance today into an 80 minutes? Yeah, well, it's, you know, it, it's the start for us at the minute away from home, isn't it? Which is which just causes problems in, in, in the two away games. So when you're behind in the scoreboard, it's, it's oh, so, sorry, when you're ahead on the scoreboard, it's a lot easier to dictate play. It's, it allows you to choose between whether you want to play a territorial game or a, or a possession-based game. So, you know, we, we were almost forced in a little bit into playing a possession game in that second half, which, which worked for us because we played some really good rugby. But, you know, like I said, it's, it's a difficult place to come if you cough up as many penalties as we did on uh, this afternoon. So, you know, yeah, I mean, ultimately, we've got to make sure that we, we start games a lot better. We started well against Scotland and it gave, allowed us a foothold in the game. It, we didn't start well against Ireland and we didn't start well here today and it, it didn't allow us a foothold. So it's, it's imperative that we, we start games well, which, which stops, stops the game getting away from you when you have to force it. And Wayne, how much is there still to be played for in the season's championship now that the, the title looks beyond you? Well, there's two test matches. They're both at home. Uh, hopefully a sell-out crowd in both. So there's plenty to plenty to play for, Nick. Thanks, guys. Take on to Matt next, please. Hi, Wayne. You, you've touched on that um, that try early in the second half. Uh, I was just curious, do you think Adam Beard was pushed out of that line-out before he got off the floor? Yes, he was. Uh, he was uh, chased down the line out and bumped, uh, which you can't do. But unfortunately, it wasn't picked up in the try stands. Obviously, a bit of a frustrating one, or maybe a difficult one for you to take then, because that was decisive in the end. Yeah, it's not very often that <clears throat> you know you throw close to your line over the top to the opposition player that's standing waiting to catch the ball. So, yeah, it's just unfortunate no one picked it up. But certainly, at the replay that we've seen, um, there was an offence there. We thought anyway. Dan, if I could just come to you quickly about Alex Cuthbert. I think he's made 176 metres today, according to the early stats. I can't remember I, the last time I saw a player make that many metres. You've been with him for his entire career at test level, really. So, Given the context of it, that was a fantastic performance from him today. Yeah, I think it was unbelievable, wasn't it? Um, it was almost a little bit like like sort of 2013, 2014 Alex Cuthbert, wasn't it? In terms of you looked in his prime today and looked straight strong and powerful in contact and um, yeah like I said a really you know something that you'd be really proud with proud of on his 50th just just you know just really disappointing that we couldn't quite get the result for, for probably a, a performance which if we're on the if we're on the right side of the scoreboard then you know he's, he's the man of the match every day of the week isn't he but you know disappointing for, for him for that but he was immense just last one for me Wayne uh, obviously early on you had to you had two HIAs Owen Watkin and Thomas Francis both both looked like pretty heavy blows can you just clarify the process that those guys had to follow before returning into the field yeah they go through some uh, testing <clears throat> behind the scenes and they both passed uh, the testing so they're allowed to play on so you know they'll be checked again after the game and, and we'll keep an eye on them and obviously uh, if they're cleared then they're back into training as soon as they're cleared Thanks, guys. Okay, and we'll finish up with Alex. Uh, you talked about the breakdown penalties, um, but it seemed in both the first half, both teams struggled to sort of get to grips with Mike Adamson's interpretation of the game. Is that, is that fair? Uh, yeah, pro you know, probably we felt like we were probably not quite on the right end of it, certainly. I, th I think, though, you know, you look at probably some of the calls, some of the calls are perhaps debatable, but some are, are, are clear as well. So it's, it's one of those where, you know, we, we got no complaints about the performance of the referee at all. It's, you know, we've got to look at ourselves and, you know, the start with, that we made in that first 20, 25 minutes, probably, you know, we, we probably deserve to be down on the scoreboard, whichever, however way it was. But, you know, we just coughed up a lot of penalties and um, just just found it, found it difficult to, to get to grips with it, yeah. And when you got those two tries in the second half, the speed of ball and the ruck clear out seemed to really speed up. I just wonder what your thought process was in terms of how the difference. Well, we, we managed to gain, we managed to put um, phases together where we, we actually made some decent dents in that first half, um, but we just couldn't back up good on good. We, we sort of allowed, allowed 
pressure to be released for, from England's point of view. And in the second half, we managed to keep ball and stress them for large periods, which didn't allow the pressure to be released and it forced the pressure back onto England. So uh, it was it was really pleasing. We, we've worked on our shape a lot and we know we haven't quite got it right probably in the first couple of weekends, but I thought we, we, we threatened the line and we brought a lot of players into play really well today. Now, uh, you know, we've got to, we've got to, Get, get that on the pitch from minute one because, you know, that, that allows us to, like I said, like I mentioned previously, it allows us to, to dictate this, the, the way the game goes as opposed to reacting to it, the way the game has gone. So it's important for us to make sure we get that on the pitch early doors as opposed to it being reactionary. And lastly, for me, Wayne and um, France look pretty decent today. How, you know, how much of a step up are you going to have to, to do for that game? Yeah, we've had two fantastic matches over the last couple of Six Nations. So... <clears throat> They're a very good side. Uh, they're improving all the time, and I haven't seen the, the entire match, obviously, but um, heard they played very well. So, look, it's going to be a great game. Uh, the last two are anything to go by. Okay. Well, is this a question? Do you want a question as well? Yeah, please, if that's all right. Okay. Um, yeah, Dan, can I ask you one? Um, obviously, England were intending to play Manu Tuolangi in this game, and he had to withdraw late. What did you see from where you were standing about how him not being there changed your attack? And was it? Did you feel it was easier to defend against him with Daly and Slade in the centres? What? Uh, no, I wouldn't. I, I wouldn't say it was easier. Well, I think what um, you know what Manu gives England is very much very straight up and down, and, and it challenges you physically. Whereas they they've obviously used um, Slade and, and Daly as sort of ball second ball playing options. Uh, kicking options, obviously, with, with their left pegs as well. So they, they had a variety to the game, which which just might allow them to play with three playmakers almost in terms of, um, and obviously it allowed them to play a territory game in that first 25 minutes and, and squeeze us a little bit. So, um, yeah, but obviously very different players to probably to how they'd have played if, if, if Manu was in the team. But um, I thought, yeah, like I said, Elliot and, uh, and Slade were, were good in terms of, making sure that they played in the right areas early doors and, and pressured us. Thanks, Dan. Cheers. As well. Okay, thanks all.